Hello you two. Today we're going to talk about the Imperial Fourth Era Institutions of Magic, the Synod and the College of Whispers. I've talked about them a lot in previous videos, but I've never dedicated their own video to them, leaving some things unsaid and undiscussed. So, without any further ado, let's kick off with today's video. So first let's start with the part that most people already know about. Both the Synod and the College of Whispers are institutions of magical practice recognized by the Empire, both closely working with the Imperial government. They were both formed from former members of the Mages Guild, which was forced to dissolve after the Oblivion Crisis when public opinion turned on mages and it was suspected by a large majority of the population that the Oblivion Crisis had in fact been caused by mages and thus people turned on the Mages Guild, even though most people didn't really have proof of the mages being involved, but they just suspected it. This caused many guild halls across Tamriel to be abandoned. For example, in Skyrim and Blackmarsh, we know for certain that there are no longer any guild halls that are occupied. And those that remained occupied across Tamriel allied themselves with either one of the two factions, the Synod or the College of Whispers. With the College of Whispers renaming their guild halls to Synagures, apparently. They both aspire to become the foremost institution of magic in the Empire and outclass the other. They constantly fight over the favor of both the Emperor and the Elder Council, in hopes of getting a one-up on the other. Next to that we know that the two factions both have a distinct identity. The Synod is trying to make a very civilized and wise impression on the people, as they refuse to do anything with Conjuration, Necromancy and Daedra, as those were the things that were commonly associated with the Oblivion Crisis and basically the idea that mages caused it. The Synod, in that respect, is a much more open organization, or at least started out as one. While the College of Whispers was from the beginning shrouded in secrets, intent on continuing the practices of conjuration, necromancy and even Daedric summonings. Even if it wouldn't make them very popular with the public. Over time, these differences in public standing and secretivity faded, as the Synod became very secretive as well, trying to guard its secret from the College. Both apparently using magical encryption and secret codes in order to guard their secrets. And at the same time, the College of Whispers also became accepted by the people in the government, with both taking on students and normalizing into nationwide magical institutions. Since both institutions were conceived around the start of the Fourth Era, they were both present during the Umbriel Crisis, the crisis where a large floating city from Oblivion would appear and threaten the safety of the Empire and in turn all of Tamriel. This all happened in the Elder Scrolls novels, The Infernal City and Lord of Souls. The Synod and the College of Whispers were then both tasked with investigating the island, marking it one of the first times in history when the two would cooperate against a common threat. They then found out that the city had been summoned into Mundus, as since Martin's sacrifice it had been impossible for any Daedra to come to Tamriel on their own account on such scale. The Synod and College of Whispers then participated in the battle against Umbriel at the Imperial City, standing shoulder to shoulder for the first time and defending the city with all their power, causing them to receive credit with the public and by the Emperor for stopping the crisis, even though it wasn't them that stopped it, but the Emperor gave them credit for it in order to hopefully reconciliate the two for a while. This mutually perceived accomplishment led to a relaxation of tensions for a while, but as both continued to fight for becoming the foremost magical institution, this relaxation did not survive into the year 200 of the Fourth Era, as by that point the institutions were once again squabbling over the Emperor's favor. We know from the College of Winterhold questline in Skyrim, where we can meet a member of the Synod, that part of the Synod's way in order to gain the Emperor's favor is by searching powerful magical artifacts that can be used against the Thalmor in the long run, which is the whole reason why we can find them during the questline in the ancient Dwemer city of Mzulft. While their continued rivalry might seem stupid, it's actually very much an advantage to the Emperor and the Elder Council most of the time, as the need to catch up to one another all the time led to an increase in magical research and doubling of capacity for the Emperor in magical research, as he now has two competent magical organizations at his disposal for performing magical research. We know that both made great discoveries in their own fields over the years. For example, we know that the College of Whispers summons Daedra in order to question them, and has thus found out a lot about the creation of the world and the origins of dragons. It was they who discovered that the dragons are eternal, unchanging, unyielding and genderless, and thus why there aren't any baby or female dragons. Like I discussed in a video a few weeks ago, card popping up in the corner if you haven't seen it yet. 
Meanwhile, the Synod has made its own advances. They count among their members powerful and innovative enchanters like Yvonne Brienne, who wrote the Catalogue of Enchantments and is praised by your town wizard in the Elder Scrolls Blades for her part in magical research. In addition to that, the Synod also has a mage named Lazarum, or rather had during the beginning of the Fourth Era, who worked out a way to fly by magical means. Not levitation, but actual flight. This secret was apparently shared with the College of Whispers in order to combat the flying city of Umbriel, in order to get soldiers up in the city and combat it. Also, both have incredibly strong political connections, as they both have influential members in the Elder Council, and back in the early 4th era, the Empire's first known Prime Minister under Emperor Titus Mead I was a Synod member, and a member of their leading Grand Council, which governs the Synod. And that's basically all that we know about either of them. We don't know how the College of Whispers is led, uh, but then again we don't know a lot of both. Uh, most information we have comes from magical research books in the games, the College of Winterhold questline, and the two official Elder Scrolls novels, Infernal City and Lord of Souls, in which they both make minor appearances trying to stop the city of Umbriel. I scraped nearly every little thing we know about them in this video and it required me to reread the two entire novels, which I personally very much enjoyed, like, don't worry about that. And I can recommend anyone actually to do it, as right now with this whole staying at home thing, they can prove a lot of fun and some, a lot of, you know, unknown Elder Scrolls lore stuff. Anyway, before I end this video, allow me to vocally thank the people that make it possible to actually sacrifice these obscene amounts of time that I spend on these videos instead of making more hours at my work. My patrons, the top bunch of whom are Mr. Bernardo Binda, Mr. Gabriel Binda, Mr. Para and Mr. Christmas. These awesome people, along with the others on screen, allow me to sacrifice all the time that I need for these videos and I'm very grateful to them. That said, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I hope you consider sticking around until coming Tuesday when the next video launches. And also, I have a pretty cool idea for a sort of Skyrim quarantine challenge, but I've been doubting whether or not that's something I should do a video on, as, you know, not sure whether that's the kind of thing you guys want to see from me, since I make lore videos almost exclusively. So let me know in the comments. And that's the end of my part. See you next time. Bye-bye.